Have you ever wondered how the in vivo power deposition around an active implantable medical device exposed to incident RF fields is calculated? Calculating in vivo power deposition around active implantable medical devices follows a tiered approach as outlined in ISOTS 10974. These tiers range from tier 1 to tier 4, each progressively increasing in accuracy and complexity. Our focus in this tutorial will be on tier 4, the most advanced level, which utilizes sophisticated computational modeling within realistic anatomical environments. So let's begin. We start in Sim4 Life by importing the Duke model along with the lead path from the tier 3 process. This path corresponds to a cochlear implant and, through the IM analytics module, was identified as the worst case scenario for the Duke model. We start by constructing the implant model. First, we select the 145 mm spline to represent the lead. From the ribbon, we select modify, then choose thicken wire, and set the radius to 0.3 mm. Next, we create a shorter spline, 120 mm in length, and repeat the process, thickening it to a radius of 0.55 mm. This results in a model where the tip of the lead, as it enters the cochlea, has 25 mm of exposed wire, simulating the electrode, where maximum power deposition is likely to occur. Additionally, we position a model of the implantable pulse generator, IPG, which is part of our study of active implantable medical devices. The IPG is placed at the end of the lead, positioned tangentially to Duke's skull. To optimize computational resources, we will use the concept of the Hoihen source. The Hoihen source acts as a secondary source of the already calculated MRI fields from the empty coil and will be represented by wire blocks that enclose the regions of interest. We create two Hoihens boxes, a whole body Hoihens box that encompasses Duke's entire body and a head Huyhens box that surrounds the implant region in the head. Now we import the birdcage coil from the birdcage coil library. We position Duke such that the center of his head aligns perfectly with the coil's isocenter. At this point, all the necessary CAD models, sensors, and sources are already prepared. Additionally, to monitor and evaluate the convergence level of the simulations, we create a point sensor placed at the center of Duke's head which also corresponds to the coil's isocenter. We create a single port EMFDTD simulation with a runtime of 320 periods to ensure that electromagnetic fields fully evolve and the simulation reaches convergence. Starting with the RF coil in an unloaded state, we generate the baseline MRI exposure field using all predefined configurations for the specific coil. This includes voltage amplitudes of the edge sources and capacitance values of the end ring capacitors, calibrated for a 3 Tesla MRI RF exposure. We configure the I and Q edge sources in SIM for life and time shift the Q signal by a quarter of the period to achieve the correct phase difference. This setup accurately models the clockwise circular polarization commonly used in MRI systems. After configuring the grid and assigning all coil components as perfect electrical conductors, with capacitors placed as lumped elements, we proceed to the solver. We switch the default software kernel to CUDA to utilize GPU acceleration for faster calculations. Finally, we rename the simulation to clockwise RF field create the voxels, and run it. Next, we prepare a simulation to calculate the whole body SAR and B1 plus at the isocenter for normalization according to the International Electrotechnical Commission limits. Similar to the MRI XVEEP library setup, we position Duke inside the coil. We create a new single port EMFDTD simulation with a runtime of 12 periods sufficient for convergence, which will be validated by a point sensor, monitoring the solution stability. We set up the whole body Hoihen source, specify the frequency at 128 MHz, and make sure that we check use original field amplitudes. 
We finally link the field coil sensor from the previous simulation by dragging it into the Hoihen settings. Next, we add the Duke model to the materials section, automatically assigning dielectric properties from the EEs material database. Duke will be automatically discretized at a 2 mm resolution. We rename the simulation to Whole Body Exposure, update grid, create voxels, and run it. Now we proceed to simulate the interaction between the MRI field and Duke, including the implant. For this step, we continue to use the Hoi Hens principle, applying it specifically to the head Hoi Hens box. We set up a new FDTD simulation with a runtime of 12 periods and set up the Hoi Hens source as previously. Later, we assign the material properties for the various components involved in the simulation. The implant's lead and the IPG components are designated as perfect electric conductors. For the insulative parts, dielectric properties with a relative permittivity of 3 and 0 conductivity are applied. We adjust the grid padding settings from automatic to manual to limit the computational space around the implant. We define specific grid settings for different parts of the implants, with a finer grid in the region of the lead. For the IPG, we set a maximum grid step of 1 mm in all directions. For the lead, the grid step is set to 0.2 mm. Lastly, for the lead insulation, the grid step is set to 0.4 mm. Considering that entities with a higher voxelization priority will be constructed first, we assign the highest priority to the most inner parts of the implant. Subsequently, all metallic parts will be assigned the highest priority, whereas Duke's voxelization will be automatically handled by sim for life We rename the simulation to Head Exposure with Implant, update the grid, create voxels, and run it. To calculate the scattered field, we clone the previous simulation and remove all implant materials by deleting the PEC and insulation entities. This leaves Duke exposed to the MRI field without the implant. Important! Do not update the grid after removing the implant. Once the simulations are complete, we'll move to the Analysis tab to evaluate the results. At this point, it's time to gather the results and perform a safety assessment analysis. First, we will study the B-field distribution to evaluate the success of achieving circular polarization by setting the two sources with a 90 degrees time shift. To do this, select the clockwise RF field simulation. Navigate to field sensor coil, then sensor extractor, and finally, B-field. From the ribbon, go to viewers and select the slice viewer. In the controller window, set the XY plane near Z equals zero, which corresponds to the isocenter plane of the coil. Examine the circular distribution of the B field to verify the accuracy of the circular polarization. Next, we will calculate the two key dosimetric quantities necessary for normalizing our results. To calculate the whole body SAR in the Analysis tab, select the whole body exposure simulation. Navigate to Overall Field, then Sensor Extractor, and finally, E-Field. In the ribbon, go to the Dosimetry section, select SAR Statistics, and open the Table Viewer. In the table, sort the simulation entities by name by clicking on the far left cell in the header row. Locate the All Regions row. Focus on the Mass Average SAR column. This value represents the whole body SAR in watts per kilogram. Note down this value to use it later in the normalization of the deposited power around the implants. To calculate the B1 plus field at the isocenter, select the whole body exposure simulation. Navigate to Overall Field then Sensor Extractor, and finally, B1 field. In the ribbon, select Viewer and then Slice Viewer. In the controller window, under Slice Options, navigate to the XY plane at the isocenter. 
In the field Data Options, select Absolute Magnitude of B1 Plus from the drop-down menu. At the bottom of the controller window, in the 2D plot settings, select Temporal Mode. Tick the Show Location box and navigate through the X and Y coordinates to the ISO center. Finally, hit Plot and note down the value of the B1 Plus field in Tesla. In the Analysis tab, for both simulations, with and without the implant, navigate to Overall Field, then Sensor Extractor, and finally SAR. Select both simulations, starting with the one with the implant, followed by the one without the implant. From the ribbon, choose Field Combiner. Set the weight of the real part for the second field to minus one and hit Refresh. To focus on the deposited power around the tip of the implant and speed up the calculations, select the Field Combiner object. From the ribbon, go to Field Data Tools and select Crop. In the multi-tree, make the implant visible and resize the crop box to encompass the volume around the tip of the implant. Having limited the volume of study to the cropped region, proceed to open the scripter from the main SIM for Life menu. In the scripter, Divide each SAR value in the cropped volume by the maximum SAR value and convert it to decibels. After converting the SAR values, find the volume where the SAR is greater than minus 30 dB. Finally, to calculate the total deposited power around the tip, integrate the SAR values in the minus 30 dB volume. The result is printed on the console. Note it down to move on to the final step of normalization, to the whole body SAR and B1+. First, we consider the power deposited in the simulation, which corresponds to the whole body SAR calculated during our analysis. Name it PSEM. To ensure that our results comply with the safety limits for the normal operating mode, we need to scale this power value appropriately. To do this, we compare the calculated whole body SAR from the simulation with the SAR limit, which is 2 watts per kilogram. We scale the PSEM to reflect what the deposited power would be under the normal operating mode safety limit. Next, we move to the normalization based on the 1 microtesla value of B1 plus P. Again, we scale the PSEM as before. By following these steps, you can confidently evaluate the safety of medical implants exposed to MRI fields, ensuring that they meet international safety standards.